Good morning, everyone. It's a pleasure to welcome you all to BackstageCon on behalf of Red Hat. I'm Balaji Siva Subramanian. I lead the product management team for Dollar Tools. It, today, I want to share with you how Red Hat is contributing to streamlining Baxter uh, adoption in enterprises. For those, of, both, but for those not familiar, Red Hat is all about open source driven innovation. We live and breathe the open source ethos, actually um, contributing actually over one million projects. As top contributors to projects like Linux and Kubernetes, we are thrilled to bring that enthusiasm to the Backstage project. Red Hat's expertise in building, uh, contributing, and expanding the open source project to industry standard, as well as broadening adoption in enterprises, stream aligns seam seamlessly with the Backstage goals. So let's dive into the challenges that we see and how, how we are approaching to solve these problems. Given the limited time I have today, I'll just spotlight three key blockers. Enterprise RBAC, ecosystem of validated secure plugins, ease of plugin management. For the most enterprises, Backstage default access for everyone just doesn't cut it. Backstage permission framework requires creating and maintaining an RBAC plugin involving significant coding and ongoing maintenance work. Not exactly the most scalable way for an enterprise. So introducing Red Hat RBAC plugin, we have simplified the game, allowing you to define roles, assign uh, groups to those roles, and access permissions without having to write any complex code. Manage your access policies seamlessly through the Backstage UI or, uh, or configuration files. And here's the kicker, it's free, open source, you can, it's ready for download, you can download from that URL shown there. There's also a talk at 240 by Gorkam if you want to know more about this plugin. And the Backstage plugin seamlessly connect the various developer ecosystem tools to the Backstage, right? And we have seen many interests there. Exciting news, we, in the last six months we have released over 10 new plugins and more to come from our, from our contributions to the Backstage, to improve your Backstage experience. You can download these plugins today from the Backstage Marketplace. We also realize it's not just contributing first, we also have to maintain it and enrich them over time, and we will do so. Now let's talk about uh, a key concern in our community is the lack of provenance and security check on plugins. This poses risk for enterprises as well as uncertainty or maintenance and, and uh, compatibility issues. Our call to action to the community is let's create a validation process you know, ideally a cell service for plugins, so for every release in Backstage Community Marketplace. We are already coordinating with uh, select ISV partners to kickstart a validation process, and we want to improve the plugin ecosystem with as many uh, ISV vendors contributing first-party plugins to the ecosystem, and that is, is a good way to get started there. So stay tuned for updates, and as we plan to join forces with other contributors here to build a safer, vibrant plugin ecosystem. And finally, let's talk about plugin management. Adding a new plugin today involves a series of steps, changing code, rebuilding, repackaging, and redeploying backstage. Even with the declarative uh, plugin integration, there's still, you need to rebuild and redeploy backstage. It could be a problem if you're running a production instance with lots of developers already on it. I want to introduce you to dynamic plugins, a one-click solution from a catalog or a simple configuration. No need to touch code or go through entire rebuild redeploy process. You can add new plugins to your production backstage instance without the hassle of coding. This is a game changer, especially for enterprises supporting a multitude of developers with diverse requirements. You can try it out today. It's available in Tech Preview. Go to that URL shown there. Uh, also, share the feedback and follow the RFC in the community, backstage community if you want to uh, put your thoughts in there and provide feedback. And let's see the, the dynamic plugin in action. On the left side, we are showing and adding a plugin by just updating the Helm chart. The user wants to add a Quay plugin in the production backstage instance, so essentially he goes to the backstage Helm chart and provides the URL of the, uh, of the Quay plugin. He also adds an SSHA hash to validate the plugin that is downloaded is secure, and then he restarts the backstage instance. Voila instant access to the new plugin um, in your backstage instance. On the right side, you see a plugin catalog convenience 
A user installs a plugin directly from the plugin catalog with click, and it, it again does the same thing essentially in the background, but, but it, it is, it, you have the plugin again instantaneously. Exciting, right? So please go ahead and try it out. And we're outside here in the booth. You can come by and ask for uh, more information if needed. As we wrap up, I want to uh, reiterate Red Hat's commitment to the Backstage project success. We are thrilled about the prospect of Backstage being a staple in enterprise everywhere. And, and we have a little something for you. Our developer advocates penned a book um, packed with best practices and a, and a guide for seamless enterprise adoption of Backstage. You can download it there. You can just use the QR code, and you'll be able to reach that uh, URL. Looking to explore even more, try our commercial offering, Red Hat Developer Hub, with full compatibility with upstream backstage, and obviously fully supported from Red Hat. Uh, simply send a request to that alias shown there. Um, we will give you immediate access right away. And thank you today for joining me, and enjoy the rest of the conference. Oh, by the way, if you want to give feedback on the on the session, here's a link. Awesome, Balaji. Thank you so much. Do we have any questions? We can take like two quick ones, I think. Anybody? Over here. Hey, uh, doesn't the dynamic plugin setup sort of contradict the safety and testing of deployment via CI/CD? Um, you know, you, you have you have the ability to uh, you know, dynamic plugin. You know, it's up, it's on your end to be able to enable that. You know, as, as, as it's, it's a plugin itself, so it enables that framework. So that if you want to enable those plugins, obviously you would only give access to certain people who have permissions to enable dynamically, right? You don't want anybody to install a plugin. Number one, um, you want to have only the admins essentially have access to those plugins. So you have to have the process to obviously have the plugin ready to go. And as I mentioned before, you can put a security hash to make sure it's the right plugin, and then, you, then only you can automatically enable it. The goal is for us is to, you know, as we go to production, let's say a year from now or two years, you know, as you had start more and more plugins in the ecosystem, today over 150 plugins, you know, I'm, I'm thinking in the next few years we have more and more, and people may want to add more of these plugins dynamically so that you're able to quickly uh, enable developers. Any other questions? Oh. One more here. Is the uh, the portal developer portal that you're uh, that Red Hat's making is that like OpenShift specific or would it support any Kubernetes clusters? Yeah, the Red Hat Developer Hub is uh, runs on any Kubernetes. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you.